Hey everyone, welcome back to Calculus 2. This will be the 30th lecture of the course and actually the final lecture of the course. Um, and in this section we're going to discuss, uh, kind of introduce the idea of Taylor and Maclaurin series. Okay, so let's hop into it. Okay, so we'll call this section 4.8 this is, I'm just going to write Taylor series, but we mean Taylor and Maclaurin series, and Maclaurin series being the special case of a Taylor series centered at c equals zero. Okay, so <clears throat> um, kind of the way to start this would be to say, well, previously um, we derived power series for um, several different functions, um, you know, using geometric series in the main with term by term differentiation and integration okay so that's kind of how we've done it in the past up to this point right and so in this section we're going to study a general procedure for deriving power series for a function um, that will have derivatives of all orders okay and that's going to be the taylor series okay so let's talk about Let's just jump right into the theorem here. So if f is represented by a power series, okay, so by a power series, and we'll say that power series is f of x equals the sum from the a, to a of n times x minus c to the n. Okay, so if it's represented by a power series like this, uh, and then we'll say for all x uh, in some open interval uh, containing c. Okay. Uh, then, okay, then a sub n is equal to the nth derivative of f evaluated at c divided by n factorial, okay? All right, so this we've seen, and f of x is equal to f of c plus f prime of c times x minus c plus f double prime of c over two factorial times x minus c squared plus dot 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 plus the nth derivative of f evaluated at c over n factorial times x minus c to the nth power and so on right so that would be the that would be the uh, the series right okay so we've we've kind of talked about this already but let's let's we, this is kind of the basis for what we're going to build the taylor series on basically this is the taylor series and we'll We'll see that in a second, but uh, what we want to do first is we want to make sure that we buy this, okay? So if f is represented by a power series, f of x, that has a form like this, right? Where you've got the sum, uh, and then you've got some a n piece for each term, some a n factor, and then x minus c quantity raised to the n power. And, it's, and this is the form, and f is represented by this and equal to this uh, for all x in some open interval containing c, right? c being the center then the coefficients are you know f uh, n degree of f nth derivative of f evaluated at c over n factorial and the the function looks like this okay all right so let's prove this <clears throat> so for this one um We'll start, what we'll, we'll assume is, you know, kind of the, st the statement here. So suppose that the sum a of n x minus c to the n, right, has a radius of, radiance, radius of convergence r, okay, um, then we know that the nth derivative of f exists you know and for 
So we know that the nth derivative of f exists for all x where we're inside of the interval defined by c minus r, c plus r. Another way to write that would be all x such that the absolute value of x minus c is less than r. Okay, and by successive, you know, and we could differentiate such a series, right? So by successive, successive differentiation, what do we get? Well, we can just go through it, right? So the f of 0 of x is equal to the function itself, a0 plus a1 x minus c plus a2 x minus c squared plus a c a3 x minus c cubed, and I'll go out to the fourth term. All right, and so on. Okay, then what's the first derivative? Well, we've seen this before. a1 plus 2a2 times x minus c plus 3a3 times x minus c squared plus uh, 4, right? 4a4 4 x minus c to the third power plus and so on, right? So basically this is kind of doing one of these. Right, because as we differentiate successively, that constant on the front is going to drop out. What about the second derivative? Let's just build up the pattern. Second derivative will be 2 times a2 plus, and here's where we can start to see the factorials. It would be 3 times 2, so 3 factorial, a3 x minus c plus 4 times 3a 4 times x minus c squared plus dot dot dot. And if we do maybe the third derivative, right, that's where we'll see 3 factorial a3 plus, uh, hold on one second, plus 4 factorial, right here the 2 will come down and you'll get 4 factorial a4 times x minus c plus dot dot dot, right, and so on. And if we keep going, right, the point is to just see where this, to make sure we see the pattern and the constants, the nth derivative is going to be n factorial times a of n plus n plus 1 factor, uh, factorial times a of n plus 1 plus dot dot dot, right. Okay. All right. And so <clears throat> this is kind of the pattern, right? This is the pattern that we see here, right? The way the differentiation will, uh, well, no, that one doesn't really work, but the way the differentiation will successively uh, bring the powers down front and you get this factorial, um, this factorial form. Now, what happens when we evaluate each of these derivatives at x equals c. All right, what happens? Well, f, the first, well, the function itself evaluated at c gets us 0 factorial, right? now, uh, times a0, sorry. All right, so hopefully we can see that, right? All of these terms would be 0. Right, you get a zero here, you get a zero here. Right, and what you're left with is that. So f, the first derivative evaluated at c, gets us what we could write as one factorial times a one. F two, second derivative, evaluated at c, tell gives us lead, you know, leads us to two factorial times a two, and so on so that the nth derivative evaluated at c will be n factorial times a of n. Okay, <clears throat> and so this pattern should be clear. Let's just make sure that we see all that, right? When I, if I look at this guy here, differentiate or, or evaluate at c, then again, all these terms will zero out. I'm left with this, which is just going to be the one factorial times a one. If I, Evaluate f the second derivative at c, these all zero out, and I'm left with this one, which is two times. You can think of this as two times one, 
right? And then the next one will be three, three factorial, and then finally four factorial, six, five factorial, six, all the way down to n factorial. Okay, so that's just what happens when we evaluate the derivatives at C, we get this pattern. And of course, we can see that this implies that A0 is f of 0 evaluated at C over 0 factorial. A1 is f of 1 evaluated at C divided by 1 factorial, and so on. Right, And really, the one that we care about is what happens with the nth uh, the nth coefficient, so a of a sub n, that is the nth derivative evaluated at c divided by n factorial. Okay, which is the result? That's what we were after. We just want to make sure that we can see exactly where these coefficients are derived from and they're coming off of the power series. Okay, all right, so then let's, uh, you know, so important right this is important notice right notice 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 that these coefficients of the power series are exactly exactly the coefficients of the taylor polynomials for f evaluate you know with centered at c right and we we defined this previously so these coefficients are exactly the coefficients of the Taylor polynomial, Taylor polynomials we saw previously. Okay, so it's exactly what we saw previously with the Taylor polynomials and that leads us to the definition of the Taylor series. Okay, so the definition of the Taylor series. So, and this is the Taylor series. So if a function f okay, if a function f has derivatives of all orders at x equals c um, then the series okay, so here it is n equals 0 to infinity of f nth derivative of f evaluated at c over n factorial times x minus c to the nth power right so this is your coefficient this is the x piece of it uh, so this is equal to f of c plus f prime of c times x minus c plus f double prime of c over 2 factorial times x minus c squared plus so on okay so this is the this is called the Taylor series the Taylor series and I guess we would say it's the Taylor series for f at c okay and so if c equals 0 it is the Maclaurin series. Okay, so that's the definition. So, <clears throat> what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that if, if you know the pattern for the coefficients of the Taylor polynomials for a function, um, you can extend the pattern easily, you know, to form the Taylor series for the function. Okay, so if you know the pattern for the Taylor polynomials, you know the pattern. You can easily extend that pattern to form the Taylor series. Okay, so let's tie those two ideas together here with an example. Let's tie those two together. So <clears throat> we saw previously that uh, here's a Taylor polynomial, a fourth degree Taylor polynomial. So we saw that p sub 4 of x, where it was equal to x minus 1 minus 1 half x minus 1 squared plus 1 third x minus 1 to the third power 
minus 1 fourth x minus 1 to the fourth power. We saw this polynomial here um, was the fourth degree polynomial for the function f of x equals the natural log of x, okay, uh, centered at uh, 1. Okay, Th then the Taylor series that we can base on this is We can base Taylor series on this is going to be, you know, let's write it out x minus 1 minus a half x minus 1 squared plus a third x minus 1 to the third power plus dot 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 plus. <clears throat> now there's this alternating piece in it, so there's the negative 1, and it looks like it should be an n plus 1 on that over n, and then it's just x minus 1 to the n. Okay, and so we could write this, and well, this would be a series. So I'd continue on. But we could write this as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n. Right? That captures all the coefficients. You can see that clearly. And then x minus 1 to the nth power. OK, so that is would be the Taylor series based on these, based on this polynomial. Okay. All right, excellent, excellent. Um, let's take a look at another example here. So here what we're going to do is we're going to use the function f of x equals sine of x to form the Maclaurin series um, and it'll be this guy here n equals 0 to infinity of f of 0 that's the nth, power, nth derivative divided by n factorial times x to the n okay so we need to know the pattern of the coefficients okay and the pattern is going to come off of the function f uh, here, sine of x. Okay, so let's figure out what that looks like. So f of x equals sine of x. f prime of x equals cosine of x. f double prime of x equals negative sine x. f triple prime of x equals negative cosine of x, right? And then the pattern will just repeat itself. We'll hop back to sine x. So you can see that we're going to hop right back up here. And so f of 0, that's sine of 0, which is 0. f prime of, of 0 is cosine of 0, which is 1. Okay. Then f double prime of 0 is negative sine of 0, which is, again, another 0. And the third derivative, f triple prime, is of 0 is equal to negative cos 0, which is negative 1. Okay? So the pattern of the series, the coefficients appear to be, uh, you know, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, right? So that's, <clears throat> that's going to be the pattern going as, as the derivatives increase. That's the piece we need. Um, and so then the power series, flip the page here. Then the power series is, well, so it's sum n equals 0 up to infinity of f, uh, der nth derivative of f evaluated at 0 in this case over n factorial times x to the n. Remember, this is the Maclaurin series, so it's centered at 0. And we can write that out. It's going to be f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial times x squared plus the third derivative evaluated at 0, 3 factorial times x cubed plus and so on. <clears throat> um, and so... <clears throat> a couple of things to notice here is that you know this is going to be zero 
because that coefficient will be zero. This is also going to be zero. The fourth degree term will also be zero. Okay, and so what we're really left with here is f prime of zero plus f triple prime of zero over three factorial x cubed plus, now we know that the fifth degree term will be up in here as well, or sorry, not the fifth derivative. Right, and so on, and you know, you'll have like the seventh as well. And so on, right? So it'll look like this. And we also know that there's going to be some flipping of the terms, right? So this one will be positive, this one will be negative, this one will be positive, this one will be negative, right? So remember, that's just these two, right? You're going from one to negative one. So we've taken the zero terms out, and so it's going to oscillate back and forth between one and negative one, right? So one, negative one, one, negative one. Okay, and so <clears throat> when we, you know, kind of consolidate all of this down into a really, uh, you know, uh, concise expression, we would say n equals zero to infinity, that sum, and then you're going to have the oscillation handled by this negative one to the nth power, and then you'll have x, and it'll be 2n plus one, right? So that would be like two times zero plus one gives you the first term. 2 times 1 plus 1 gives you the second term, which is the third derivative in 3 factorial. Okay, and then over 2n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so this would be <clears throat> this would be the power series. Uh, sorry, the Maclaurin series, I guess, that's formed uh, using the Taylor coefficients for the function f of x equals sine of x. Okay, now, uh, question, does this series converge. Um, it, well, it does certainly at zero, but wh where else does it converge? Um, can we quickly see that? It's the same tools will be applied here. So we can look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus one term over the nth term. We can use the ratio test. All right. So we can test this quickly and we'll see that uh, yeah, indeed it does. So like plugging in the n plus 1 term to start with. So this would be n plus 1 and then x of uh, 2n plus 3 over 2n plus 3 factorial. And then all of that would be divided by the nth term here. So I'm going to invert and multiply. So this would be 2n plus 1 factorial over negative 1 to the n and x to the 2n plus 1. All right, and a lot of stuff will cancel here. All right, so basically uh, up top we're left with just a negative 1 and x squared. And then down below you're going to have these two will cancel somewhat, but you're left with two, two factors here. So 2n plus 2. and 2n plus 3. All right, so that's what it looks like. And we know that this is going to be 0, isn't it? It doesn't matter what x is. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what x is. As n gets large, it's going to overtake whatever x is, and um, and this this will this ratio will be 0. OK, so that what does that imply, right? Uh, this implies that the interval of convergence is all of our all real numbers, right? Basically the radius of convergence is infinite and the <coughs> uh, the series converges for every real number. Okay, so this is great, right? This gives us a really quick way to generate a power series from uh, you know using the methods that we've had previously explored, you know, of Taylor series, Taylor polynomial, sorry. And we call them Taylor, Taylor series. Um, now, an important thing to note here is to, you know, notice, right, from this example that, you know, we cannot conclude, right, we can't conclude that the power series converges to sine of x for all x, right? That's important. Um, 
what we say is that it converges to some function, <clears throat> but we're, you know, we're not sure which function it is, right? So in order to say that a series that's derived from Taylor polynomials built around the sine function, we have to be, we have to say, we have to prove something additional, right? We have to prove something about the remainder of the Taylor polynomials, right? And so <clears throat> in order to do that, in order to do that, well, let me just recap that. So we built this. We built this series using f of x equals sine of x. But we cannot say that the series converges to sine of x for all x and r. for all you know, x, real number valued x. What we can say is that it definitely converges to sine of x at, the, at its center, right? That's, that's what it's built on. Now, whether it converges everywhere, uh, it re requires a little more work, okay? To show that it converges everywhere, we need to prove something about the remainders, right? So when we have a Taylor polynomial, um, you may recall that it's an approximation, right? And as we move off of the center, the approximation becomes less and less precise, right? It's more and more of an approximation, right? So less, less accurate. And so what we need is, uh, we need to discuss quickly what we mean by the remainder of a Taylor polynomial. Okay, what is the remainder of a Taylor polynomial? <clears throat> so if we approximate f of x with, you know, some nth degree polynomial, we'll call it p sub n x, okay? <clears throat> we should expect some remainder. Right, and what we would say is that f of x is equal to the approximation plus the remainder. And we'll denote the remainder by r sub n of x. Right, so f of x is going to be roughly equal to p of x plus some remainder. Okay, well, precisely, this would be precise, but p is just an approximation, so there's always going to be this error term. Okay, and so to be a little more precise, we say that r of n, the absolute value of the r function, is equal to the absolute value of f minus p sub n. And we call this the error. Okay, and this is the error associated with the approximation. All right. <clears throat> okay, and so let's talk about what what is this what is this this remainder term this error term. Okay, so theorem. Okay, if a function f, if a function f is differentiable. through order uh, n plus one in an interval i, so on an interval, you know, i containing c, then for each x in i, there exists Uh, there's going to exist some number z between x and c, okay, such that, okay, such that what? Such that f of x is equal to f of c plus 
f prime of c times x minus c plus f double prime of c times x minus c squared plus dot 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 plus the remainder uh, at x. Okay. Now, what is this remainder where r sub n of x is equal to? Okay, it's equal to f of n plus one. So this is the n plus one derivative evaluated at some value c, z, which is between x and c, divided by n plus one factorial times x minus c to the n plus one. Okay, so this is the form of the remainder. Okay, for some z. The z is not known. Um, the z can be, uh, can, be, can be found, but for some z between whatever your value of x is and the center of the, of the Taylor polynomial, um, the remainder is gonna be this, this, given by this statement, okay? <clears throat> Okay, let, let's see an example. Maybe this will, uh, an example will help clear any confusion, I think. So example. Uh, let's take f of x equals sine x. Then we know that p3 of x, we can calculate, we think we've calculated before, I think we just calculated actually. x is gonna be x minus x cubed over 3 factorial. Okay, so this is the third degree Taylor polynomial for sine of x. So what we want to do is we want to, let's approximate, let's use p3 to approximate the sine of 0 0.1. Okay, and when we say approximate, we mean determine the accuracy of the approximation as well. So pull and figure out what that remaining piece is. Right, so we've got a function sine of x, we've got the corresponding third degree Taylor polynomial, and we want to use the Taylor polynomial to approximate sine of x uh, when x is 0 0.1. Okay. All right, so let's check this out. Let's run through this. So basically we're just going to use the previous theorem to approximate this. So we'll use the previous theorem. Okay, and so what we can say is that sine of x is equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus a remainder, right, r3 of x in particular. All right, so it's equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial and then plus what's the remainder the remainder going to be it's going to be the fourth derivative evaluated at some z uh, divided by 4 factorial times x to the fourth okay so this is the remainder here okay and now notice note z is in the interval 0 to 0 0.1. So it's going to be somewhere in there, right? Okay, you can just pick. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so then, I mean, we can look this up. We can see the sine of 0 0.1 is approximately 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 cubed. Over 3 factorial, right? So just plugging it in plugging in the expression, or the, the value, and we get, this is 0 0.1 minus, now I've done this calculation ahead of time, and it's 0 0.000167, right, which is approximately 0 0.099833, right, so right about there. Okay, and so, that's you know that's just the approximation from the Taylor polynomial side. So we haven't got the remainder yet. But let's look at the remainder now because so because you know the fourth derivative of uh, f evaluated at c is going to be sine of z. You know we saw this earlier, right? You you would have to figure out what that fourth derivative was normally, but we kind of had it. We've seen this one before. We know that it 
kind of flips back to the original function at the four, with the fourth derivative. Um, so because of this, uh, it follows that the error, right, so the error R3 0 0.1 uh, can be bounded. Can be bounded by, all right, so first of all, on the low end, 0 is less than R3 of 0 0.1, right, so we know the error is positive, okay. And it's we know that the error is equal to sine of z over four factorial times zero point one to the fourth. Okay, we know that that's less than zero point zero 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 one. Okay, uh, over four factorial. Right, which is this here is approximately zero point zero 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 four. Okay, so basically, what we're able to say here is that the remainder here is somewhere between is is you know some it's greater than zero, um, but it's less than strictly less than zero point zero 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 four. Right, so then all of this would imply, right? This is just the remainder. This is going to imply that you know sine of 0 0.1 is somewhere between 0 0.099833. Now this was strictly the p4, right? That's what p4 is. We know that that's low, right? Because there's a bunch of terms left off. Right, and this is gonna. We know that sine of zero point one would be equal to uh, basically zero point zero nine nine eight three three plus r three, which would be less than the higher, the upper bound here, right? So it's less than zero point zero nine nine eight three three plus point zero 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 four. Okay, and so what is this? This is P4 plus, uh, sorry, this is P3, P3 plus R3. Right, we know, so it's the third third degree Taylor polynomial plus the remainder for the third degree Taylor polynomial. Okay, so so all in, all in, what, is, what, do we, what does this tell us when we're approximating sine of 0 0.1 using this Taylor polynomial? We know that 0 0.099833 is less than sine of 0 0.1 which is less than 0 0.99, 0 point, there should be a zero in there, 99837, right? So really great precision, even with a third degree polynomial, okay? All right. All right, all right. So that's a little aside about remainders. Now, sometimes you learn about the remainders in the Taylor polynomial section. Sometimes you learn about it when you need it for Taylor series. So we've elected to discuss it during the Taylor series. Okay, and so basically, um, you know, kind of getting heading back, getting back to the discussion with Taylor series. What we said previously was that um, we had an example where we derived a Taylor series uh, from a particular function, sine of x, I believe, right? And we said, hey, um, we can conclude that the, the power series converges, but not necessarily to the function uh, who, for who, for, from whom we got the coefficients for the Taylor polynomials, right? So when can we conclude that it converges to the to its source function that's the question okay that's the question okay so theorem <clears throat> if the limit as n goes to infinity of r sub n is equal to zero this is the remainder term for all x in the interval i, then the Taylor series 
4f converges and equals f of x equals the sum n equals 0 to infinity of the nth derivative of f evaluated at c over n factorial times x minus c to the nth power. Okay. So if the uh, if the sequence of remainders converges to zero, meaning the remainders get smaller and smaller as as you go further and further out into the series, um, and this then basically that tells you that the Taylor series converges. Okay, converges to f. Okay, let's prove this. Okay. We can prove this pretty easily, actually. So for a Taylor series, um, the nth partial sums uh, coincide with the nth Taylor polynomials. Okay, that's great. <laughs> that's a big. So basically, we can say that s of n x is equal to p of n x. Right? They're the same. The nth Taylor polynomial is the same as the nth partial sum Taylor series. Okay. Now we know, you know, that p sub n of x is equal to whatever the function is minus the remainder. So it follows pretty quickly that um, the limit as n goes to infinity of s of n of x is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of p sub n of x. Okay, and which what is that? Well, that's just the limit as n goes to infinity of f of x minus r sub n of x, right, minus or inner. So whatever, you know, the p, p sub n is just the function itself minus the remainder, okay? All right, that's just algebra up here. Actually, it's not even algebra, it's just given right there. Okay, and so we can break this down a little further. f is not dependent upon n, f is just a function of x, All right? And so this is equal to f of x minus the limit as n goes to infinity of r sub n of x, right? And when does this equal f of x? This equals f of x when r sub n goes to 0, right? So if this limit is 0, then the nth partial sums, the sequence of nth partial sums for the Taylor series will converge to the value of f evaluated at x. Very nice, very neat. You know, if you follow the discussion on the remainders, this is really straightforward. The remainder t discussion can be a little complex in, on, in the weeds, but on the surface, this is a straightforward concept, hopefully, right? It's literally, I mean, yeah, this hopefully is clear, right? And then if you get that, then this proof is squeaky clean, okay? All right, excellent. So uh, for a Taylor series, we now know that the Taylor series will converge to uh, f if, and only if really, uh, if the uh, remainders, uh, the sequence of remainders has, have, a, have a limit of zero. Okay, all right. <clears throat> How about a couple of examples and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so example, um, let's, pull back uh, up our example with f of x equals sine of x. So consider f of x equals sine of x. Um, let's, you know, using this same, same kind of mechanism that we've just been discussing, let's show that it's Maclaurin series converges to sine for all x. Okay, 
right? So we need to show, what are we trying to show here? Well, we're trying to show that sine of x is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of, now we previously worked this out, um, negative one to the nth power times x to the two n plus one power over 2n plus 1 factorial. Now this is, again, we've worked this one out, so I'm just kind of jumping in as an example. Probably we're going to take it further. Right, so remember what this looks like. It's x minus uh, x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial plus so on, right? So infinite series. So what we want to show is that this is true for all x, right? We want to, for all x in R, right? All real numbers, this works. Okay, so um, what, what do we do? Where do we start? Well, we start, we can start with the fact, and we start in a number of places, but I think the best place to start is to say that f of x, the n, what's the n plus one derivative of f of x? Well, it's, it's gonna be equal to plus or minus sine of x or plus or minus cos x. So that much we know, there's no question. Okay. And so given that uh, we know given that we know that the absolute value of that nth derivative of x, uh, sorry I should put a z in here. We're we're gearing up for a remainder discussion, so let's switch over to z. Actually I want to use z up here. Well it doesn't matter. So the n plus one derivative of f evaluate at z, where z is between uh, zero and c, uh, we know that that's less than or equal to one. We know it because it's sine or cos x, and those are always, they oscillate between one and negative one, right? Okay, so nothing really even fancy there. Okay, so we know that this is true for all x in R. So that means zero is less than or equal to r of n of x, right? Which is equal to, let's write it out here, n plus one derivative evaluated at z, again, just pulling that remainder up out from the previous discussion, uh, divided by n plus one factorial times x. This is a Maclaurin series, so it's just x to the n plus one power. Okay, and so then obviously that's gonna be less than or equal to x to the n plus one power over n plus one factorial. Okay, so <clears throat> um, perfect, right? So basically we know that this is just basically negative one or positive one, and so it's meaningless inside the absolute value. Okay, so dump it, dump it out. <clears throat> Um, and so, so now the question is what happens up here? Because we need to show that the remainder is zero, right, in, at the limit, right? And so what happens up here? What happens to this as n grows? Well, this is, you know, a little bit of hand, this is slightly hand wavy, but, uh, but we know that n plus one factorial grows much faster than x to the n plus one for any x. Right? It doesn't matter what x is, right? A very rapidly n plus one factorial is gonna overtake it. So that being the case, um, we know then therefore that the limit as n goes to infinity of x to the n plus one over n plus one factorial is equal to zero for any x. Right, so that, that limit is zero. All right, so then, you know, what happens up here? So then as n goes to infinity, what can we say? Well, we can say that, you know, you've got zero less than or equal to your remainder term, which is less than or equal to this, n plus, uh, x to the n plus one over n plus one factorial. And as n goes to infinity, this goes to zero. Okay, so by the squeeze theorem, this is zero, this, this is zero, this goes to zero, that means this goes to zero. So r sub n goes to zero as n goes to infinity.
Right? And so that being the case, then the uh, Maclaurin series must converge to sine of x. Okay, perfect, exactly as we would want it to be. It's amazing how that can happen. Okay, all right, just one more example, maybe two more examples, and then we'll, we'll be done. Okay, so one example would be find the Maclaurin series. for f of x equals sine of x squared. Okay, so one thing to notice here is that if you start to differentiate this, it's gonna get really messy really quickly, right? So we know that f prime of x is equal to, you know, for example, 2x cos x squared. That one's not too bad. But when I go to the second derivative, you know, now I suddenly I have to use a product rule here, you know, and I get a big old mess. So this is messy and uh, not workable. It's gonna be difficult to spot the pattern, basically. So what we can do is, again, let's pull back up our trusty g of x equals sine of x, which is equal to x minus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the fifth over five factorial minus da da da, right? So we just saw this. And so can we find the Maclaurin series for this? You betcha, not a problem, right? All we gotta do is uh, consider g of x squared. g of x squared is equal to sine of x squared. And we saw what happens there, right? Previously we saw what, what um, properties of power series, if we exponentiate the argument, you know, it's just like multiplying, right? So we should get x minus x to the sixth over three factorial plus x to the tenth over five factorial plus, or sorry, minus x, this would be x to the fourteenth over seven factorial plus da da da, right? So that's sine of x squared. Okay, how about another example? One more example, I keep saying one more, I just can't stop. <laughs> Let's find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals one plus x to the k power. So this is like a binomial, right? So f of x is equal to one plus x to the k. f prime of x is equal to k times one plus x to the k minus one. F double prime is k times k minus one times one plus x to the k minus two and so on. All right, what's the nth derivative? Well, it's uh, k times k minus one dot 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 times, now what is, is what's the last one gonna be? Well, we keep dropping these down all the way to n, so what's left would be n plus one, so k minus n plus one, and then it'll be one plus x to the k minus n, right? So the last term to drop down would be k minus n plus one, because this is k minus n. Okay, and so what, what happens when I evaluate all of these at zero? f of zero is one, f prime of zero is k, right? f double prime of zero is gonna be k times k minus one, and then this is just one. And f of n of zero, which should be this whole, this whole string here, right? So k, k minus one, dot, 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 k minus n plus one. Okay, so we've got that, right? So these are this is what we need really to form the Taylor series for this guy, right? The Maclaurin series, sorry, centered at zero. Okay, and this will produce what does it produce? Well, it gets us one plus k times x 
plus k times k minus 1 x squared over 2 plus let's just go straight to the well we'll do one more k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 x cubed over 3 factorial plus and now here's the dot 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 I need a little more space here so dot 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 plus and then it'll just be k times k minus 1 dot 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 k minus n plus 1 all over n factorial and then it's just going to be what x to the n all right so this would be the very this is like a really general right it depends on k right but this is going to be your uh, Maclaurin series for 1 plus x to the k. Okay, this is 1 plus x to the k. So let's plug in a real, a real um, value for k now. Well, what about, so what about f of x equals 1 plus x to the one third, so like the cube root of one plus x. Okay, well, it's just going to be uh, this basic pattern. Just toss in, a, you know, one third for k. All right, so it'll be so one plus x to the one third is going to equal one plus x over three. That's one third times x. And now, you know, you do have to do a little bit of work here for sure. This would be one third times. 1 third minus 1 times x squared over 2 and then plus 1 third times 1 third minus 1 times 1 third minus 2 x cubed over 3 factorial and so on and so you could you could you could work this out to be 1 plus x over 3 and then you would end up with something like I, I think this would be negative because that'd be negative 2 thirds so it'd be minus 2x squared over 3 squared times 2 factorial. And then this one should be plus. You'd have two minuses there. So it'd be plus. I think you get 2 times 5x cubed over 3 cubed 3 factorial. So you can be getting to see the pattern here. Uh, plus dot, 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 right? You can sort this out. OK. So, but that is, that would be an example of using kind of this general formula here for a specific K. Okay, all right. So I think we'll probably end it there. And this is actually the last uh, recorded lecture for Calculus 2. So we've uh, done, you know, many, many hours worth of Calculus 2 instruction at this point. So hopefully, um, you made it, if you made it this far, hopefully you found the course useful. I would assume so. You would have probably not stuck with it had you not. So congratulations, well done. Um, we will uh, we will be uh, setting up a Calculus 3 course uh, soon to follow. Probably just keep working. So uh, Calculus 3 is uh, available or coming soon. Okay, and so hopefully we'll see you there. Um, um, and so uh, until then, everybody take care. Thank you.